okay youtube back with another clip here and as you can see we have the uh, hood on a flat position rather than the upright in which i uh position to paint the hood and as you can see a lot of orange peel got about two or three runs on there uh due to the position on how i applied the clear coat but uh we do have a high glossy surface here so uh with that said you know there is room for correction with a little bit of buffing and that's what we're going to do today and uh, what we have here is just our basic uh prep material we would need for the buffing part process here we got a little uh sanding stick here and uh, i like this because it's flat but at the same time it has these two uh screw ends that hold uh the sandpapers in place that do not have the uh sticky side to kind of hold it into position so that helps a lot and this is our uh, mcguire compound here and uh, just a spray bottle of water and i'll be going with the uh 1500 grit sandpaper is what we have here and i also have an 800 if i want to get a little bit more aggressive with it uh, we'll kind of just go along with the process to see which works best for the uh, process that we're doing here. Now we have our uh, polishers on the table, our buffers here. This is just an old one here, an oldie but a, go but a goodie. It works, but we'll be working with our uh, Bauer here. This is uh, has much more RPMs, spins a little faster, and it's just a bit more stable. And uh, we'll be going with the uh, wool pads. This is actually an old one that I've been using. And I come to find that the wool pads, when it comes to buffing, they work great to re remove the uh, 1,000 to 2,000 sand marks from the sandpaper. And then after that, you know, at times we get a little bit of hazing. And then I'll move to a softer sponge-like material that... Uh, kind of deletes the uh, hazing that we get from the buffing sometime. So we're wiping our hood down here. We want to make sure that it's free of dust, any particles that may be on there to where when we're applying our uh, sanding paper over the surface, it does not cause deeper scratches other than the uh, 1500 scratches, which we do want on a hood before our, uh, buffing and polishing. So we'll wipe it all down with a clean microfiber towel, shake it off so that all of the particles that uh, fall into it, you get that off so you don't put it right back on the hood. Make sure you have a lot of towels and it's good to change it out from time to time. And uh, here we have more towels and that's what I wanted to show you. And as you can see, the uh, sanding process already started here. You can see I'm just applying water. I'm working with the uh, miniature sand block here with uh, the 1500 grit and uh, just basically just applying a little bit of pressure. I'm not trying to dig in too deep. I don't want to scratch the surface too deep uh, to get a burn through. We only want to scratch our clear coat surface here. I actually have three coats of clear. There is a lot of clear on there, so that makes more room for, you know, improvement just in case if I did have to dig in a little deep due to runs to level things out. But uh, just slightly applying some water in the white milky streaks that you see there is the clear coat that's being uh, sanded off slightly. But uh, just taking my time working in portions, I'm starting off with the driver's side here making sure that I cover all areas with a little bit of sanding, apply some water and then sand a little more. I examine the surface just to make sure that everything looks uniform as much as I uh, can get it. <clears throat> There's always room for improvement as far as to how good you want your uh, sanding and your buffing done. This is not a show car, but, you know, I do want to get it to where there is a shine. And uh, I'll wipe that off, and you will see that even with the uh, sanding that I've done, 
I still have slight orange peel. And if I wanted to, I can dig in a little deeper to level those areas off. But the buffing kind of corrects that. You, you may see a little bit, but the buffing does correct it to where it digs in. And it's due to the sanding that I've done. I can dig in a little deeper with the uh, buffing in those low areas that are there. The It just leaves enough room for the buffer to actually buff those surfaces also. Now, if it's real bad orange peel, you would have to kind of apply more pressure with your buffer so that it digs in to kind of buff those areas. But since we're scratching the surface and we're kind of leveling things off here, it kind of makes room for better shine. Now here on our runs that we have i decided to take a razor blade to kind of scratch those surfaces uh it makes for quicker work the 1500 sandpaper uh kind of makes it a longer process to do so with this razor here i can kind of focus in only on that particular particular area to uh get to these scratches and then once i'm satisfied to where i have a good level i actually can come back with the 1500 get grit and give it a nice sand off again and then we'll kind of just play it by eye to see how it looks and then we'll take it from there but yes just scratching off the runs here and sometimes this just makes uh, room for faster work but you also want to be careful because you're working with a sharp blade and you don't want to kind of angle in a bad way to where it kind of digs in below your clear coat uh, area and it digs in into the actual paint you don't want that so you kind of want to scratch at an angle slightly to where you're not applying too much pressure but you're applying enough to just remove the run that you have there and you could see the more that i kind of scratch those low areas that are in the middle of this run here you can see that they start to become smaller low areas because they're starting to level off now it's up to the person doing the job i pretty much could stop here buff that polish but that uh, run will still be present so it all depends on how good you're actually trying to get the job here if you're working on a show car you actually want to get it to where it's completely leveled off to where that run is not present but uh, we're gonna sand the whole hood down here to make sure that we can get a much more better shine compared to what we had after the painting we did not just want to stop there because there was plenty orange peel present so i'm just continuing on with the uh runs here we're focusing on those areas see if we could get those to a low spot to where the runs are just not as present as they seem and then i'm feeling with my fingers just to see how it feels uh gloves it's uh, much cleaner to wear gloves, but a uh, clean hand without the gloves kind of gives you a better accurate uh, feel for what you're feeling for. So you want to make sure that those runs are not as aggressive as they uh, seem on the uh, hood here. And as you can see, we have a lot of clear coat that were taken off from the uh, runs here. So I'm going to kind of sand it off now. I'll stop there and then I'll sand it with the uh, 1500 grit sandpaper again and we'll take it from there. Now I kind of just gave it a quick wipe down here. Just sprayed some water on there and as you can see it's drying and those orange peely areas are becoming present again. But uh, as you can see the surface is a bit much more leveled off and like I said if I did want to proceed with the 1500 grit just to level that off more to where the orange peel is not as present that would be fine also if we're pushing for like a show quality type of uh finish here but uh just the way it is if you have a good wool buffing pad you know it makes good for getting into those low spots also depending on how much pressure you are applying with your buffer 
And uh, you also want to blow out your hood. Make sure you, in between each step that you do, you're wiping, you're blowing off, because particles do fly on there, and those particles are just room for scratches and things that may fall onto your hood will just cause other problems that we don't want. Now, this is a wool pad, and I'm deba debating whether I should use the... Uh, application buffer that I have with the tie knot so I'm gonna use the uh, hook and loop but as you can see it's drying and those areas with the uh, orange peel are becoming more present but uh, this is just the beginning process it always looks like that you know when you're applying your sandpaper you lose your shine but once you start to buff that shine you know you could always bring it back as long as you have your clear coat and that's the good thing about clear coat uh it's paint but it's correction paint depending on how you're doing it you have to know what you're doing but it always can be corrected with a little bit of sanding with the correct sandpaper and buffing with the uh correct buff pads and the buff machine that you're using so here as you can see i'm just applying the uh buffer and I'm not really applying pressure. I kind of just want to watch it moving inch by inch just to see what the Maguire compound is doing. And uh, at first, it may look a little uh, kind of dull to where the shine is not there. But as you continue on to leave that buffer over that surface and that compound starts to dry, and the more it dries, the more that it actually... Uh, works here to dig into the uh, clear coat to kind of level off these surfaces it's tedious so you kind of want to take your time just to let the buffer do its job and it's not an instant right away result uh, you have to take your time just be patient let the buffer kind of spin a little it's leveling off the areas but at the same time it's polishing so remember, we're only fo focusing on the uh, driver's side here. And I'll, from time to time, just dab a little bit more of the uh, compound over the areas where I feel that it needs more. And then we'll just apply the buffer over that area and we'll just let it buff for a couple of seconds. I'd say even up to a minute if you have to. But just play it by eye. It all depends on how it's looking. And you always want to watch your surface just to see how it's changing. Because from time to time, from the scratches to applying your buffer, and then the buffer actually uh, scratching the surface with the compound, you will see slight changes. So you kind of want to leave it to where the shine starts to come back and also to a certain point to where you're satisfied so slowly just kind of just passing it over the areas on the driver's side here and i kind of do a one to two inch spin kind of rotation with the buffer with the same amount of pressure as i'm uh, moving it around like that you don't want to kind of sporadically go up and down with your buffer to where you apply one pressure pressure more pressure on one side than the other so we'll let it sit i'm at the same time watching it seeing what it's doing and then i'm slowly gently just moving across the areas here where we have our 1500 grit scratches uh, to every bit of the areas to where the shine starts to come back here like I said, it's tedious. It takes time. But, uh, you know, with patience, you, you know, good achievements and good accomplishments are made. So we're kind of working our way from the outer areas back up and then back down. So we'll put our buffer down here and then I'm just going to give it a little wipe just to see how it looks. You want to kind of wipe it just to get rid of the uh, dry, dull material that sits on there. And then we'll give it a look just to see if it's actually making a difference. And what you see here, we have a quarter area here with our shine. A little bit of hazing on there. But other than the hazing, if you compare to where these scratches are, you can see we have a much 
more shinier surface here. So slowly it all depends on the person. And as you can see, there is slight orange peels that are still there, but minimal compared to how it was before. And uh, we actually did a nice scratching with the uh, sandpaper to where we scratched it to where the buffer was able to kind of dig into those low spots and remember that all depends on how much pressure you are applying with your buffer but uh much is not needed because uh you want to let the buffer do its job now as you look at the passenger and driver's side here you can see that one side is more orange peely than the other we still do have orange peel on that driver's side but it's just not as present and uh, you can still see that those runs are still there. So I'm debating whether I want to grab the razor and kind of try to dig in a little more. I do have the uh, 800 grit I could scratch across those areas to see if that will actually help. So when you're doing things like this and you run into little areas, you kind of want to debate to where which will be the better process to correct those small certain areas that you have there. Now I decided to move on to the other side here, the passenger side, and as you can see I've already started the scratching and uh, we're just drying it off now and uh, we're gonna kinda let that water dry and as you can see as it dries it has a dull orange peely look uh, all of the imperfections are present, as you can see here. Now, if I wanted to, I could actually scratch that surface a little more with the 1500 grit. And as I'm feeling here, I can feel the orange peel a bit more compared to the neighboring side of it. So I'll kind of, I, what I did, I actually went over it with the 1500 grit to where these surfaces were even. Now we're just going to pass through everything here with our buffer and uh, just working in different sections uh, I find that you make better work of doing it that way you kind of focus in on one area rather than trying to focus on uh, more areas than really necessary because you don't want to go over everything and then the process is not going as you plan so you kind of want to work at one spot and if what you're doing works you want to continue on to do that same thing to another spot. So it's kind of bit by bit and piece by piece. I'm applying a little bit of pressure, but at the same time, I'm watching the buffer. I'm actually examining. I'm seeing what it's doing. Is it actually working? Is it is it actually bringing that shine back? And uh, it's a slow process. It's not something that happens right away, like I said, but... Uh, as you can see, depending on the areas here, I'm applying more pressure than others just to see if that kind of helps because the shine kind of starts to come back on one portion but not as much on the other. So I'm kind of leveling the buffer to where it does the job to actually bring that shine back just on that surface that I'm focusing on here. And then from there, we'll just watch it. We'll see what it actually does, if it's actually working to bring that shine back how we want it. And I'll grab the camera here. I'll show you just in that area, as you can see, compared to where these scratches are, and then where I applied the buffer, we'll wipe it off just to get that uh, residue uh, from the compound off. And as you can see here, we have a pretty good shine. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of clear coat, so that kind of makes for easier buffing. We're not losing our uh, UV protection here. We'll, we still have that. But at the same time, it's protected. It shined. And uh, as you can see on this portion here, I actually have the whole hood buffed out. And at the same time, I'm examining. I'm still debating. Do I need to kind of re go over the areas with the 1500 grit sandpaper depending on you know the person's satisfaction if i wanted to i can to get a little bit more of those orange peely areas off but uh we do have a good shine and as you can see there's a lot of hazing and this is where i'll 
kind of debate whether to change the pad to a much more less aggressive pad like a sponge pad to kind of help with the hazing here but uh everything looks fine i'm gonna give it another buff a wipe down and then i'll take it outside and i'll show you what we have here now we're outside and as you can see uh, with the reflections from the trees we have a much more reflective surface area with the clear coat it's less orange peely the orange peel is actually still there but just not as present but uh if like i said if i wanted to we can correct that also but uh, I've decided to leave it the way it is. We do have a good shine, and this is just a small repair job to where we had to replace the hood on the car. But uh, we have a real good shine, and the those those runs that we had, if you really look into the hood, you could actually see that they are still present, but they're just not as uh, bad as they were before. The hood actually looks good. We have a good nice glossy glassy shiny area here with the buffing and uh yeah the mcguire compound and the bell buer uh buffer here made great work of this uh hood here